Hi, so I moved here from Washington, D.C. Um, this summer with my partner, and we decided the most interesting way to do this kind of trip is by bike. So um, usually when I said this to people, their reaction was, you know they have planes now, right? <laughs> Good follow-up to former. Um, but what you can see from the window of an airplane is pretty different from what you can see at 12 miles an hour on the ground. So the things you can see, smell, hear, taste, um, feel along the way are pretty different. And so, and as geographers, I'm sure you'll appreciate how much fun it is to um, take GPS tracks for a trip of this length. And so coming from the perspective of geography, um, I had a few questions that led me along the way um, throughout this journey. So in terms of temporality, was this one event, as in a single bike ride, or many separate events, as in 88 days of um, cycling and camping? Uh, what connects people so strongly to the places they live? And what compels a total stranger to invite you into their house, um, to camp in their backyard, or to share a meal with you? And so um, one important thing to remember is to always carry a paper map. Um, but in terms of time, there's different you don't necessarily have to track in terms of time. Um, sometimes we counted the miles, we counted mountain passes climbed, um, the people we met, and so there's lots of different ways to track your progress. And being on, being on a bike for so long gives you a lot of time to like think about questions such as why Montana is known as Big Sky Country. So we first thought entering the state that it might have something to do with the thunderstorms we were having every day. But it might also have something to do with the fact that the miles of uninterrupted views really allow you to feel that the sky is closer somehow. And people have different um, sources of pride. This is Alexandria, Minnesota. And just for context, uh, it's about in central Minnesota. And they have um, a runestone they claimed was left by the Vikings in the 14th century. and so. They're proud of being the birthplace of America, which we thought was pretty funny and a little skeptical still. And so there's lots of different sources of pride. And depending on where you are, these questions are going to be answered in very different ways. So for example, which state has more lakes, Wisconsin or Minnesota? Um, what's the best place to get pierogies in Pittsburgh? And how in the world do you pronounce these words? Uh, we were thinking Milan, Delhi, and Creek, which is what I would say. But if you're in Michigan, it would be uh, Milan, Delhi, and Crick. And so <laughs> another thing to remember is that if you ask a Michiganer like where they're from, they can always tell you where they're from by the hand map. <laughs> Unless you're from the UP, which is the Upper Peninsula. And the overwhelming lesson I learned from this trip is that people are awesome. First of all, like people will just take you into their homes, um, share a meal with you, and <laughs> Um, but at the same time, people are different all over, which is very interesting. Um, and there's different ways to track a journey of this length. I would say it's, um, <laughs> sorry, gongs. Um, so I, I would say it's, it's one journey, but it's also many different journeys. Thank you.